731 right now. As Mitty's protests continue, tensions are running high at college campuses here in New York, especially at Columbia. Yeah, overnight, several new developments to tell you about. A Columbia spokesperson telling PIX11 that protesters have agreed to remove a number of tents and comply with FDNY and NYPD requirements. Yeah, students will also make sure that anyone who isn't a student will leave. And perhaps most important, they've taken steps to stop discriminatory and harassing language. The conversation will continue this morning. That's right. Meantime, top brass with the NYPD joined members of the Adams administration in meetings with college leaders to help them figure out the best ways to really de-escalate some of these protests we've been seeing. Yeah, so joining us this morning is the Deputy Commissioner for Public Information for the NYPD, Tariq Shepard. He's going to tell us the latest on everything. Morning, so morning. before, thanks so much for being here. Before we get to what happened in Col on Columbia or at Columbia, can you talk to us a little bit about what happened at Grand Army Plaza uh, last night, the arrest there near uh, Senator Schumer's home? Yeah, so late last night we had a couple of groups come together and had a protest unrelated to what you saw at Columbia mm -hmm. and, and NYU, but over 200 people arrested, mostly for uh, disorderly conduct, blocking vehicular traffic. You know, we see sometimes that things can escalate pretty quickly. We have seen on, on some of the NYPD social media platforms or other protests, there were bottles thrown. Can you talk about the scene last night? Was it relatively calm and those arrests were just because of blocking traffic or did things take a, a little bit of a violent turn? Yeah, there's, when you have that many people, there's always going to be a few people who decide to be, you know, a little more forceful and aggressive. And I'll check to see the exact uh, totals and, and what all of the arrests were for, but mostly taken into custody without incident. And is there any police presence near Senator Schumer's home today? That uh, I'll, double, I'll double check, but um, I know Senator Schumer has his own security, mm -hmm. yeah. but um, you know, these protests are usually pop up things. And uh, while our Intel scrubs social media and takes a look at all of this, if we do see something that we're concerned about, we will add additional security. So let's talk about the latest in at Columbia University, right? Obviously we've seen tensions rise there on campus, right. the NYPD there to assist. There have been these talks on social media last night that there were officers in riot gear outside of the campus just in case things got out of control. There was this ultimatum to kind of get some of these agitators off the campus sometime today, if not by midnight. What's the latest the NYPD's involvement in this? Right, so we have maintained the presence outside with our SRG for several days now. And that's mostly to just keep the peace and make sure that we don't have any clashes out there where we have any major crimes that take place out there. We have to remember that Columbia is a private institution. Mm -hmm. um, we will enforce the law, uh, but we need to be invited in. So that situation that still exists on the plaza, although they put out a 12 p.m. deadline last night, that wasn't the NYPD that put out that deadline. Mm. We still have to have some conversations uh, and talk about what the plan is, even if we do clear that plaza. What's the plan to maintain it? What will be the plan going forward until the end of the school year? How many officers do you actually have out there? Well, we don't discuss numbers, but um, the numbers that we have out there has been able to keep that area safe while these protests have been going on. You know, we keep hearing that phrase, professional agitators. We heard you guys talk about this. We heard the mayor talk about it to describe some of the protesters. How, when you go into a situation like this, are you able to identify who is an outside agitator? Some of it is posted online. We'll see that some of these groups are advertising, hey, come out. Uh, the, sometimes when you get your hands on people, you realize you've had them before and they are mm -hmm. a member of certain groups. Some of them wear certain insignia that'll, that'll distinguish them. Um, and some of the behaviors uh, show you right away. You know, when you have students out there or certain people that want to be peaceful, and then you have other groups who come out there and clearly you look at their behavior mm -hmm. and their behavior, uh, the intention is to ignite a situation. Mm -hmm. That's usually an indicator that that's a professional uh, person or, or group of people that's trying to... And you to believe that there are some of them on campus? That's, that's, to, that's possible. Um, do we believe that they do infiltrate some of these uh, peaceful protests and try and turn them into a uh, confrontational? Yes, absolutely. Now, House Speaker Mike Johnson is expected to visit the campus today. What is your plan there in preparing for his visit? Uh, well, we always, when politicians come up to do uh, uh, press conferences in the city, we have DCPI on standby to assist, but usually they have their own communication staff. As we do with everything else, we will have our SRG out there just to keep people safe. 
and that would include a politician who's coming up to do a press conference. Mm -hmm. Our job out there is just to keep the peace. What do you expect when, if you do get that call, to clear out the campus, right? Because we saw what happened at NYU the other day. There were bottles thrown uh, and chairs that were thrown in yeah. the middle of, of trying to move some people around here. So what are you expecting if you do get called in to clear some of these tents? I really don't have an expectation. Um, that will be up to the protesters to decide how they want to behave. But SRG is trained. Uh, they've, they've, they've done this over 2,000 times since uh, October 7th. Uh, with different types of protests. Um, they are probably the most experienced group in the country, and they'll be prepared for anything. What happened at NYU? At, at NYU, we just basically cleared it out. Um, there were some professionals that infiltrated that group, uh, started throwing chairs, bottles, uh, and in those situations, we will we'll continue to investigate to see who perpetrated those acts, and we will make arrests going into the future. However, the key difference between NYU is I thought we did a better job of maintaining it overnight mm. so that way the next day we weren't facing the same problem and NYU was also aggressive and took the onus to make sure that they maintained their own uh, plaza area after we cleared it out and I, I think that that will be the plan going forward. If we do clear something out, we have to have a plan to maintain it afterwards. Do you think Columbia didn't have one? I don't think, I, I don't think anybody thought that right away. I, I thought. We, we cleared it out and we thought that would be the end of it, but now we see that that was something that we should have put into our uh, action plan when we went in, and we'll continue to do that if these things pop up in the future. And the NYPD also still at NYU? You're maintaining your presence there? A small presence, yes. Okay. Uh, the, obviously, you saw them put up the plywood. That helps, and so we don't have to put as many resources down there. All right. Uh, Tariq, good to see you as always. I know you'll be joining us for a big uh, half-hour special next week with yeah, the NYPD. So we'll talk great. about that much right. more larger conversation. But appreciate you being here this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Yeah, thank you.